Are you able to see by using your sense of hearing? Just how flexible are people with hypermobility? And just what happens to the brain after repeated head trauma? Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be taking another look at the long awaited new season of the Kengen Ashura anime. Now if there's any other anime show that you'd like me to check out please leave those down in the comments. And if you want to support the channel please do give this video a like. Otherwise, if you're ready, let's begin. Atsuki Takeshi, 40 years old. He was the first person to be able to get rid of his body. He was the first person to be able to get rid of his body. He was the first person to be able to get rid of his body. Being born weighing 12 kilos, that's totally insane. I kind of feel bad for the mother. Normally when a baby looks like they're going to weigh more than 4 kilos, we have to deliver that baby through a C-section. So I can't imagine how they got this baby out. <laughs> so, muscles 52 times denser than the average person. But I believe in the English dub, they say he has something called Superman Syndrome. And interestingly, this syndrome does actually exist. And it's when a boy is born with an extra Y chromosome. These children tend to be taller than their average counterparts. And strangely enough, their muscle tone actually is weaker rather than being stronger like Takashi. <laughs> And his opponent looks to be this Julius Reinford, who, as they say, is a German medicine masterpiece. I mean, he's able to run at the speed of top athletes, all whilst weighing 200 kilos. And it looks like he's so doped up on steroids that he might even put Jack Hummer to shame. Okay, so we've got these two men made of muscle and they come together with their first contact, colliding their fists. And with the amount of blood that you see spurt out of his wrist there, you'd be worried about something like a boxer's fracture. And this goes to show that you can have the biggest muscles in the world, but bones do have a breaking point. Oh, okay, so getting speared into that wall. And the obvious injuries would be the damage to his spine, as he gets pushed against that solid wall. But the less obvious injuries will be those of internal organ damage, as he's getting sandwiched between this muscle man and a solid wall. The organs that I'd be concerned about are things like the spleen, which if it ruptures can cause you to bleed to death. <laughs> Oh god, so that first hit by Takashi must have broke this guy's nose. But then following on from this, that blow that Takashi takes could easily have ruptured his tympanic membrane or his eardrum, fractured some facial bones, or possibly even ruptured some of the superficial blood vessels found along the scalp, which can lead to serious hematomas. <laughs> Oh, these guys are just wailing down on one another. I guess neither of them took a self-defense class. Fortunately, with them being so bulky and muscular, the muscles would almost act as body armor protecting the underlying bones and organs. However, I'd still anticipate quite severe bruising and a lot of soft tissue swelling from all of those blows. <laughs> Oh god, so a blow to the back of the head, which could easily lead to a KO. And the reason hitting people on the back of the head is banned in most competitive sports is because of the serious injuries that you can do to someone's neck, such as causing a neck fracture, as well as injuring the brain, particularly the brain stem, which you can think of as being the control centre for the brain. If this gets damaged, it could lead to coma and even death. <laughs> Oh 
僕の手だったんだから。Oh, so using the blast core punch, Takashi's been able to deliver a heavy blow to Julius's abdomen. Now he's hit him on the left side of the abdomen, which is where you find the stomach. And this could account for why he's then vomited up some blood. Luckily for Julius, it wasn't the right side, as taking a liver punch with that level of force could have ended the fight. Ah, okay, so Julius backsteps. Another one of Takashi's blast core punches to lessen the impact on his abdomen. Very clever. But then we see that Takashi gets caught up in probably one of the strongest bear hugs I've ever seen. Again, obvious injuries would be snapping somebody's spine, but other injuries could be fracturing someone's ribs and causing the collapse of someone's lung. <laughs> Okay, so it looks like Takashi can also use this blast call power as a defensive maneuver as well. And the way that it's described is though he's using his muscles a bit like a spring. He basically contracts down all of his muscles, compressing himself, before finally releasing with recoil that gives him that additional power. I don't know if there's any truth in this fighting technique, but it certainly does generate some distance to allow you to produce more power when throwing a punch. Oh god, so a headbutt and then a face plant before finally getting thrown into that wall. He's certainly sustained some facial fractures. Fortunately, the forehead is probably one of the hardest parts of the skull, so we're probably looking at fractures to both the nose as well as the maxillary sinuses. His face probably won't look the same after this fight. <laughs> Oh gosh, so having your face dragged across concrete, I can imagine you're going to lose quite a lot of skin off that side of your face. In fact, we do see a bit later on that that side of his face is bleeding and red raw. With that area being so large, he may well need some skin grafting just to cover it up. Remember, your skin is the first organ that acts as defense from bacteria getting into your body. And so now that this has been ripped off, he's really susceptible for severe facial infections. Oh god, what a kick to the face there, with sufficient force to leave an indent in Julius' cheek. And this may well look like that due to an accumulation of soft tissue swelling that he's picked up earlier in the fight. And it looks like that's ended it, and I'm not that surprised after taking a heel to the face. There's a real serious chance that he's completely shattered Julius' jaw, meaning from here on out, he may well need to eat to a straw. <sighs> Ah, okay, so rather than using a skin graft, it looks like they have some artificial skin. And this is quite commonly used in medicine to help with wound healing. We typically see it being used in patients who've sustained severe burns or have a chronic wound, as it helps to form a temporary barrier to prevent infections and promote healing. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, so straight off the bat he wastes no time in going for an eye gouge. But I think these moves are supposed to be illegal, right? However, miraculously, it looks like he's been able to dodge that eye gouge and just sustain some superficial injuries to his cheek muscles. God, these fights are just brutal. <laughs> Oh 
Oh god, so the reason that such moves are so dangerous are the potential for serious injuries to your neck. Hyperflexing your neck this way can put a lot of strain on your spinal cord and almost tear off your nerves that go on to supply your arms and feet. This can lead to severe chronic nerve pain as well as numbness, weakness and even paralysis. <laughs> Oh god, that is very graphic, isn't it? I mean, clearly he's perforated this dude's eardrum and possibly even damaged the inner hearing apparatus of the ears. Who knows, he might have gone deep enough to even tickle the brain. It looks like this guy's not only going to be blind, but also deaf too. <laughs> Ah, okay, so it looks like this guy's been using his sense of hearing to allow him to see, a bit like Daredevil. But I seem to remember a case of a child who was able to do something similar by clicking as a form of echolocation. So clearly by him taking out one of his ears, it's definitely going to leave him disorientated. <laughs> Oh god, a kick there to the knee, and we can clearly see a fracture to the patella. This is going to make it really uncomfortable to wait there and subsequently affect your balance. Also, with such an injury, there is a risk of damaging your ACL, or anterior cruciate ligament, that prevents your thigh bone from slipping off your shin bone. Really guys, this is a horrible injury that I've sustained, and it took me six months to recover. <sighs> Oh bloody hell, he's gone for the eye gouge again. What's up with these maniacs? It's like they wanted to just stick a finger in any orifice that's available. But with the amount of blood that we're seeing spraying out here, he's likely completely perforated the eyeball, unfortunately rendering him blind. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like he's somehow been able to avoid that further eye gouge. But oh god, another thumb through to the other ear. And he's clearly gone through the eardrum, so I think this guy's now completely deaf and completely blind. Now of course the eardrums can be repaired, but if the inner hearing apparatus such as the bones or the nerve are damaged, this could leave you permanently deaf. Okay, so it looks like he is in fact completely blind, as the onslaught of blows begins. Firstly, he takes a direct blow to the nose, which I assume is going to cause a nasal fracture, and then it looks like he takes a clothesline to the neck, which could fracture your larynx or your voice box, ultimately rendering you either speechless or having trouble talking for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so this anime seems to have the most amount of successive injuries I've seen so far. I mean this guy has had his ears destroyed, his nose broken, his voice taken away and then he's just been slammed onto his neck. I wouldn't be surprised if this move ends the fight and he ends up being paralysed. Oh god, so he takes out this guy's both of his ears at the same time as payback. But I thought he was supposed to be blind. What happened there? Remember as well that your balance center is actually found within your ears. So these have likely been damaged also. So he may well find it difficult just to remain on his feet. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
皮膚筋肉を超え肋骨の下をくぐり抜け直接心臓をつく Oh god, he was about to go for the eyes again for a third time. This guy has an obsession about taking people's eyes out. But no, at the last second, he has a change of heart, no pun intended, as he shifts his attack to his opponent's chest. Now, you've got to remember that your heart is only able to pump blood around the body by beating in a synchronous action. And so, anything that disrupts the synchronous beating of your heart can alter the amount of blood that gets pumped out. Which could lead you to collapse and even die. One, two, three. So, my Sosa, Mutema, Gizenda! You know, that's not a bad way to go out as a wrestler, getting tapped out. At least he didn't do anything else to his body whilst he remained on the floor. Also, the explanation that was given about him being able to see, despite having his ears taken out, was that he was using his sense of smell. And unfortunately, although this could give you a rough indication of where a smell was coming from, I think it's a bit far fetched to think you'd be able to see using this sense. <laughs> Oh, these fighters don't waste any time with introductions as he goes straight in to paralyze his opponent. Fortunately, however, your spinal cord isn't really that exposed. You'd have to penetrate through a firm disc of solid bone before you could reach it. <laughs> <laughs> so, if that hit you, you'd end up with one hell of a headache. But even if that didn't fracture your skull, it would certainly leave you at risk of bleeding on the brain, causing something called a subdural hematoma. And the danger with these is that they can often go unnoticed, as the bleeding can occur quite slowly and over a protracted period of time. Over several days, as the bleed grows, people can feel progressively more unwell with a headache. And feeling drowsy to the point where they might end up losing consciousness and go into a coma. That's why, as doctors, we take every head injury really seriously. Oh, God, that must be a really hard kick there he's taken to his forearm, as it looks like he's completely fractured his radius bone. To be honest, that might affect his ability to pronate at the wrist, which is an essential movement with throwing a punch. Oh, so he's used the force of that headbutt combined with his uppercut to try to take out his opponent. Imagine all of that force being transmitted to a fighter's chin, probably the most vulnerable point on any fighter. I would normally expect this to result in a knockout or, as a minimum, at least fracture your opponent's jaw. Nice. <laughs> So, not knocking him out with that move, he's gone for several repeated blows to the head to cause a concussion or possibly even knock him out. We've got to remember that each time he takes a knock to the head, regardless of how strong the skull bones are, the brain is going to be put through an acceleration force. Smacking against the walls of the skull and subsequently bruising it. And with a significant enough blow or several repeated blows, this could cause enough trauma to cause the brain just to shut down, which is what we end up calling a knockout. Okay, so he fell for the same move, again taking the full force of those blows to the chin. This time, however, he's been more successful in causing a KO. But ultimately, I feel this fight was pretty one sided. What do you guys think? <laughs> Oh, 
あたかも完全から消えたかのように錯覚させる方法<笑> This is a pretty cool maneuver basically moving around when someone is blinking but they also make mention of taking advantage of your opponent's blind spot but what is your blind spot? well basically it's part of the retina at the back of the eye where the optic nerve joins the eyeball and at this point you have no photosensitive cells so it leaves a blind spot in your visual field but normally we're not capable of seeing it because our brain makes up the gap in the difference <laughs> Ah, okay, so it looks like this move involves a high speed rotation at the wrist, which effectively turns it into a rotating blade. Now, if that cut was deep enough, it could sever your flexor tendons, which allow you to form a fist. Even worse, he could have hit the radial artery, which would cause you to bleed to death. <laughs> Oh god, I don't know what's worse, having your palm impaled by someone's fingers or having your fingers snap back in this way. What do you guys think? I personally think that having your fingers snap back would definitely be more painful and he's definitely going to need some surgery to straighten those out. Oh god, you're not safe from anyone in these fights. I mean, getting impaled on two broken fingers, that's pretty gory. Presumably though, he would have had to penetrate through the muscles, crack through the ribs, to then allow him to get through to the lungs and heart with two broken fingers, which I don't really think would be possible. <laughs> Oh gosh, so it looks like that initial blow was to open up the chest wall and then this second one has penetrated far deeper and with that blood splatter you'd be concerned that he's actually reached the heart and the main blood vessels which would ultimately kill you. Remember that anything that disrupts your heart's normal beat could cause a reduction in the amount of blood flow that's coming out of the heart leading you to collapse and die. Oh, but again with the eye gouge. I'm surprised that people don't know how to defend against this. It seems like it's been in everyone's fight so far. But wait a second, I thought this guy fought in the previous round against the doctor. Didn't he end up getting poisoned and died? <laughs> so, just to make sure that I've got this right, this guy suffers from hypermobility and so is able to dislocate his shoulders and his elbow joints and literally turn his arms into bullwhips. Now, although there is a condition called hypermobility and it does allow some humans to perform the most bizarre and wonderful contortions, I think being so mobile that you're able to turn your arms into two deadly whip weapons is a little bit of a stretch too far. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is a complete genius. He's been able to perfectly time doing a forward somersault with the collision of this whip hand to allow him to safely take out the power and land exactly back on his feet. You know, this kind of reminds me of that guy who's cycling on a motorbike on the freeway. He then gets hit by a car and somehow ends up surfboarding the car on the freeway. I guess you could say that freak incidents have happened to real life people. Oh gosh, so 
guys, he's only mobile to a certain extent. That's definitely a fracture to his forearm. And it looks like he's fractured both the radius and the ulna bone in the forearm, unfortunately rendering that limb completely useless. If he survives this fight, he's definitely going to need some surgery with plates and screws to correct that. <laughs> Oh god, he's effectively turned this guy into a tombstone, hammering his head into the ground. And to be honest, I don't think there's any way of surviving this kind of injury. Although it might look like his head is now underground, if this occurred in reality, it's more likely that your neck would either hyperflex or hyperextend, effectively severing your spinal cord, leaving you paralyzed. <laughs> of course, he survived this injury, and what he's done is he's somehow been able to retract his vertebral column, effectively like a turtle would do if it was defending itself. However guys, I can't say anything like this is possible, because although your bones might be flexible, the spinal cord just isn't. <laughs> So it looks like our final fight is a professional boxer versus an all-rounder and it starts off by him taking a straight punch to the face. And looking at how his face caves inwards you'd definitely be worried about facial fractures caving in to the underlying sinuses. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a lot of blood coming out of his nose and mouth after taking a hit like this. <laughs> Oh, and then he takes a blow to the left side of his abdomen, otherwise known as a liver punch. Remember, taking a blow like this can stimulate your vagus nerve and activate the parasympathetic nervous system. This will cause a sudden drop in your heart rate as well as your blood pressure, which could lead you to collapse. Oh, so several repeated blows to the face, and this leaves Agato to bring his guard up to cover his face, opening up his abdomen, which he then strikes. And it looks like he's hit him directly into the solar plexus, which could be extremely painful and leave you completely winded due to your diaphragm going into spasm. <laughs> Oh, so you can see that Agatha plays dirty in this fight by stepping on his foot, meaning that he can't escape from any of his punches. But also, you've got to remember that boxers draw a lot of their power from their footwork and how they plant their feet, transmitting that force through to a punch. However, for a professional boxer at this level, it's not enough to stand on his foot to swing the fight in your favour. <laughs> Oh wow, that's pretty cool. So he's now switched to include some Muay Thai into his fighting and he's somehow been able to sustain a laceration to Agato's neck. Now that looks dangerously close to his carotid artery and had the laceration been deeper, that would have been death, not just a KO. But what has he got on his elbow that has allowed him to even sustain this laceration? As the last time I looked, my elbow had a curved edge. <laughs> Okay, so with his arm suddenly going limp like that, you'd be worried where he's torn a muscle in his upper arm or damaged one of the nerves that supply that limb. In this case, as it's occurred straight after being punched in that area, you'd be more worried about a torn muscle. However, the good thing is that you have many muscles in your arms that serve the same function. And so although one of them might be torn, it doesn't mean that he won't be able to use that limb. <laughs> Oh, 
閉めてダメージを軽減させた<笑> well, what an unexpected turn of events, with him delivering a knockout blow to his chin. As mentioned earlier in one of the fights, a fighter is most vulnerable when they're attacking, when they let down their guard. Now, if it doesn't knock him out, it would certainly be enough to leave you disorientated and make you feel a little bit wobbly on your feet. <laughs> Oh god, so it looks like he sustained a classical boxer's fracture. The irony of it happening to a boxer. And certainly after this, it would take the sting out of your punches, with any further punches you throwing possibly worsening the fracture. Also, reassuringly, at the moment, all the bones are still in the skin, so we'd call it a closed fracture. But if he continues to fight with that fist, They then might penetrate through the skin, at which point we call it an open fracture, and these definitely need surgery. <laughs> So in a surprise turn of events, Agato switches back to using more of a wrestling technique as he throws him across the arena before delivering a knockout kick to the face. Again, probably one of the most vulnerable points on any fighter is going to be your chin as it transmits all the force and power from a hit directly through to the brain leading to a knockout. I'm just surprised that he got the opportunity to do this to a professional boxer. Okay guys, a lot of brutal fights in today's video. Let me know which was your favourite down below in the comments. Otherwise, if you're free just now, why not check out one of these two videos? If not, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.